Oh, hello. <laughs> Today, Tony and I are going to be reviewing the Nikon D810 versus the Canon 5D Mark III. I've got the 5D Mark III here. We have the same lens, a Tamron 24-70 f2.8. And you know what? Whichever one we like better, we'll keep. Really? Maybe it's time to switch from Canon to Nikon. That would make some people very happy. <laughs> some people very angry. The D810 is a real minor upgrade from the D800E, but they made some important improvements, like they changed the way the shutter works so that now it won't shake around so much and you can actually get some more of that detail from the 36 megapixel sensor. They also made some improvements to the AF system, and frankly, the AF system is what kept us from using it instead of the 5D Mark III. The 5D Mark III just always snaps into place right away. The, D800, the D800E was a little bit slow. So the new Nikon is five frames per second. What is the Mark III? I think it's at six frames a second. But here's the thing about the D810. You can put it in DX mode, which is like a 1.5 crop. Yeah. And it will do six frames a second. And oh. if you attach that big, big old vertical grip, you know, mm -hmm. that makes it look like a D4, then it will do seven frames a second. Oh, with DX the mode. extra power. Yeah, exactly. So you could technically get faster for things like sports and wildlife. And don't you also have to account for the autofocusing system? Which camera was it that we reviewed where it could do a ton of frames per second, but none of them were ever in focus? <laughs> that uh, A6000. Yeah, I yeah. think it's like 11 frames a second, and it would get about two frames a second They kind focus. of fudge the numbers, right? Another thing that I noticed is that the Nikon has 50% more megapixels than the Mark III, so... I don't know, we should see a huge difference there, right? Maybe. It kind of needs to be tested because you have 50% more megapixels, but you need lenses that are sharp enough to make a difference. Yeah, well, luckily we have the same lens. It's going to be interesting to put these to the test and see just what these numbers mean and if they translate to real life situations. If you had to pick one, New Zealand or Minnesota accent? New Zealand. New Zealand better than Minnesota still, Yeah, because huh? they say all their E's like I's and that's fun. Yeah, that is Brit. pretty fun. <laughs> okay. What are you at, 200? 200, yeah. So right smack in the middle of the frame? Yeah. Here are the two pictures, and this is really interesting because they have exactly the same settings as you can see, but they have noticeably different exposures. Like, just look at the Canon histogram versus the Nikon histogram. Close the Nikon is exposed more, even with the same lens and the same settings. So I just dropped the Nikon exposure a bit until their histograms look about the same, and those to my eye, they look about the same. Zooming into four to one, you can see at this resolution, the Canon image over here is definitely soft, and you can just see so much more detail in these leaves on this planter. I'm just gonna raise the exposure by both shots for, by three full stops. And you can see that the Nikon clearly has far more dynamic range. Look at the bricks in the shadow area here. Here it's just a mess of noise, but here you can distinctly see the outline of the bricks. And this is gonna be trivial if all you do with your pictures is put them on Facebook. But for me, when I make huge prints, this is a common problem. And with the Canon, what I end up doing is I go in and clean up all this noise manually. And on the Nikon, it would just be so, so much easier of a job Let's compare the ISO 64 and ISO 100, both on the Nikon camera, just looking at the close-up details with the exposure boosted so we can see how the shadows can be recovered. There's distinctly less noise at ISO 64 than ISO 100, and ISO 100 soundly beat ISO 100 on the Canon, so ISO 64 is definitely going to be better. And check out the noise in the solid areas here versus the noise here. If it's difficult to see in the video, then go ahead and download the sample files. That'll make it a lot clearer for you. Let's go somewhere else. This has like got a lot of cars and stuff. All right, we'll move on. So for the more precise landscapes, I put the camera on a tripod and I want to delay the shutter and use mirror lockup. I'm just using live view for this. So that should give us about the, the best possible options for this. I'll say I went into the menus to try to turn on mirror lockup for the Canon. I couldn't find it. <laughs> Nikon has a whole mode for it, which makes it much easier to find. But I have it in live view, so the mirror's already up, so that should be fine. 
So now we'll switch over to the Nikon. Yeah, there you go. Now I'll turn on mirror lock up here and I'll hit this I button to make sure that I have the electronic front curtain shutter turned on. And then I'm just gonna turn on a delayed shutter so that I don't shake it. Exposure delay mode, we'll do three seconds. Okay. So now one, two, three. Oh, mirror lock up, I have to push it twice. There we go. So mirror lockup mode, the first time I push the shutter, it moves the mirror up, and then the second time, it takes a picture. And I had it on a three second delay. Don't you know. This purple flower is a good example, and the Nikon clearly shows more detail. So now we have portraits and sports left. Which do you want to do first? A combination, and we'll call them sportraits. Sportraits? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a nice spot over here with the path. Lost our attention. You lost me. First up, I'll start with the cannon. Very nice. You need a haircut, don't you know? See what I did there? I worked that don't you know right in. All right, that's pretty good, Stacey, there we are. Oh. I'll switch to the other camera. All right. All right. I'm using the back button focus on both cameras. I feel like the skin tones on the Canon ended up being a little red for whatever reason. Uh, also, once again, the picture is a little bit underexposed. It's kind of, I, I always end up adding exposure compensation to the Canon. The Nikon rendered the skin tones a little truer. I think that kind of thing is easy to fix. Now, the Nikon has an interesting feature. It has face detect mode for metering. Uh, even when you're using the viewfinder, you don't have to use live view. So it can detect a face and then meter properly off the face. So I'm interested to see if the exposure was any different. We have the Mark III on the left here and the Nikon on the right. And check out the different exposures. Now as Chelsea was walking towards me, she walked under the shadow of this arch here. And you can see the Canon basically just metered based on the overall scene. And the background is much brighter, so it casts Chelsea's face in deep shadow. I'd have to really recover that shot. The Nikon, however, metered off of her face, and I feel like Chelsea's face in this picture is perfectly exposed. Chelsea's face in this picture is wildly underexposed. And for things like weddings where you don't get a chance to adjust your exposure compensation and reshoot, that can make a huge difference. I think it's your turn to look beautiful, Mr. Northrup. You want to go to a different spot? Yeah. All right. That's a cool building. You want my hat and camera off? Or yeah. do you not care? Yeah. yeah. Put it on you. Oh, man. I didn't sign up for this. You look so cool. <laughs> Why does he do this? What's my hair? Uh, well, it's a rough day for all of us. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. It's not the answer anybody wants to hear. You know, I'm just like being cool. If you could look as much like you're in a boy band as possible. Damn, you look good. Right now I'll be like the happy boy band guy. Like I'm just like... No. <laughs> Look sad. That's smoldering. Okay. Less, um, mm. <laughs> You look like Lauren Malvo. He has so many different expressions. Like there's the doing work. And then there's the, uh, who am I gonna give the other walkie talkie to? Maybe you'll be my friend and you can listen on the other walkie talkie. But then there's also the <laughs> Lester. You want to see my Lauren Malvo face? Yeah. I see people touch the wall a lot. This is a common pose. They're like, I love you, wall. What if it looks like I ripped this down, like, ah, thank you, wall. <laughs> Let's get one of me like this. Ah. I want a centered shot here. I think it, looks like like it matches my outfit. Oh, just like a wide shot? Yeah, like I'd be like, oh, like a country girl. I'm trying to like get a whole Martha Stewart. It reminds me of Martha Stewart. Y'all want some sweet tea? What else do Southern people do? It pretty much it's sweet tea and curtsying. I own the Kentucky Derby. Is that possible? Maybe, if you're Kentucky. Would you like a mint julep?
You got a close up of the bee? Yeah. He oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I need to know what these plants are, Tony. We need this for our yard. They were talking about how the screen is supposed to be super bright, but I'm having a real hard time seeing it while it's recording. <gasps> There's a bunny! <laughs> You're gonna have to get the bunny. So now we're gonna take some sports shots of Chelsea. I'm gonna put it in continuous focus, AFC I already have there. Uh, switch this into continuous high, and I'm gonna use uh, the various focusing systems of the D810 to see which works best. We're gonna count how many shots we get per second in focus as Chelsea is walking towards me. Ready? Yeah. Looking through the sports shots, I kind of got about 63% sharp and in focus, and that's about what I've come to expect from my 5D Mark III. The Nikon got 84%, however, and Nikon took that focusing system from the D4S and brought it down into the D810, which is pretty amazing because that's their top end camera. I, I feel safe saying that the Nikon now out autofocus the Canon. <laughs> that's it for the sports. Let's head back and we'll go into the photo studio and then up some night photography. Hey, Tony? Yeah. What, were you, what was your first impression? Uh, not that much different, really. Like as far as the shooting goes, I felt it, the same way. It's the same. Like the buttons are in a different place, but well, yeah, they changing were, the focusing points, changing the setting. There were some little things that were nice, like um, you know, bracketing is more accessible. I so love you don't that have to bracketing go through menus. Button. All right, so handling is a draw. That's a Texas of you. We're doing low key, dark background, and Chelsea's our model. For studio shoots like this, the most important factors are workflow. The camera has to be 100%. It has to have be able to write to two memory cards at once. So if you have a memory card failure, you don't lose the whole shoot. But you also need a lot of detail because the art director might end up cropping way down. Or if they're doing a magazine layout, they might have to format it on the page properly. For any sort of commercial work, you end up shooting to crop. You end up shooting wider than you would really want to. And that means you need lots of megapixels because you're going to end up cropping it way down and then potentially printing that crop really big. So I'm kind of excited to see how the DA-10 does. The first thing I need to check is to find out its sync speed. Faster sync speed helps to freeze the motion a little bit. I'm also going to take advantage of the ISO 64 on this because you always shoot at your base ISO in the studio just because you have unlimited light. That did not sync. Still looks like it's a little dark at the bottom. All right, so as you can see here, at 1 250th, there was a little dark fringe at the bottom of the frame. That means it wasn't sinking quite correctly. The bottom of the frame here looks just fine at 1 200th. So I did get a slightly faster sync speed than I do on the Mark III, but that's good, 1 200th instead of 1 1 60th. Oh, you look good. The Nikon images were bigger and they had less noise, so they were definitely better. I'm not trying to look intense, it's just that I have a lot of wind in my eyes. Yeah, I know, it could be uncomfortable. <laughs> look, I can smoke. Come on, Tony, capture the moment before I get lung cancer. Well, let me get it going. Both cameras handled just fine. Both Chelsea and I missed having a rate button. This really tastes like shit after a while. Give me more of like almost a profile, but look back to me with your eyes. <laughs> Am I gonna smoke a whole cigar in like 10 minutes? Is that okay for you? <laughs> Tastes so bad. You're really enjoying yourself. If you do tethering by a USB, the Nikon supports USB 3. Okay, I'll give you a break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> put that up. Smoking is bad.
FA in 30 seconds at ISO 64. Are you shooting? First thing I'm going to do is just take a look at the noise up here in the sky because this can always be pretty unbearable. And uh, I know it's going to be a little hard to see on video, but I'll zoom both of these up to 4 to 1. And these are pretty dark, so just so we can see it a little bit better, I'm going to crank the exposure up. The, the noise here on the Canon at 4 to 1 is far worse than the noise on the Nikon, despite the fact that the Nikon has more megapixels and more detail. Now this is zoomed in to 4 to 1, and I've cranked the exposure up three stops on these cameras, but check out how they compare with shadow detail. On the Nikon you can see the individual sighting, and on the Canon all you see is just this ugly, ugly banding, just tons and tons of noise. Speaking of, let's see if we can recover any detail in the shadows here. This is the properly exposed picture. So let's see if I crank up the exposure here. I'll crank it up three full stops. It's amazing how much detail you can recover from the shadows of the D810. Right, now I'll pop them off the tripod and just see if they can focus on a really dark area. Side D Mark III focuses in the light just fine, but can't focus on a dark area. Let's see how this guy does. So the focusing and usability is about a tie for both cameras. So we're going to wrap everything up. We're going to answer some questions that people ask me on Twitter. Give you the link to the sample files. But first, first... shameless self-promotion. <laughs> Guys, to make these videos for free, we need you to help us. Actually, just help yourself. Because we have some really great products that we're going to plug now. We have a video series four DVDs, seven hours of video, and I think it's like $70 on our website, but we have a coupon code out right now. Yeah, they could use uh, Live45, get that for $45. That's a bargain. It's a bargain. You can get the Blu-ray of that too, and we have the number one photography book in the world, Stunning Digital Photography, which comes with, this says seven hours, but it's now nine hours of video that you can't find on YouTube or anywhere else. And uh, the ebook is nine ninety nine, and the paperback is what, like eighteen? Yeah, on seventeen Amazon? bucks. And I want to say we talk a lot about gear, and the gear does make a difference, but it makes like five, ten percent of the difference. Yeah. The rest has to be done with lighting and composition, and that's what people don't understand. But we it's still get a billion people. questions about gear. Yeah. And anyway. The book, these DVDs, that will teach you the important stuff. That will teach you the art of photography. And you have to get that right before you go and spend thousands of dollars on gear. Spending a little few dollars on some instructional material will make way more of a difference in your photography than upgrading your lens or, or gear. Yeah. But once you get through all this material... And you want gear. And we if know you do. want to learn more about gear. Because we get so many questions. Yeah. We have a whole buying guide where we... Gosh, we looked at so much gear to make this. Yeah, detailed reviews of hundreds of cameras and lenses. We tell you what sort of lenses to get, and it's updated for life. So as new cameras come out, I'll release a new version of it, and you'll get that update electronically for free. You can get it paperback or ebook. And all of this stuff comes with uh, not only free updates, but access to our community where you can upload your pictures and get feedback. We get a lot of emails. And we just don't have time to look at everyone's picture individually, but you can upload it in our community and we'll respond or other stunners. It's really fun there. You could ask anyone. All right, so let's okay, get let's into get the gear. It. So for landscapes, what did you think? D810 or 5D Mark III? D810. Why? It was sharper. There was more detail on the shadows. I like just the color better the colors are slightly different yeah they are a little bit different i bet you could probably tweak it to be the same yeah, if that's what you wanted tweak it but to be out the of the same, camera I, I did like it a little bit better and you're right man the shadow is so much better so much more detail the da10 just completely cleaned house way with less landscapes. noise too so much less noise how about for night photography oh my god the da10 was vastly better you do two things with night photography you recover the highlights when you have like lights and cities that yeah. are blown out and then you recover the shadows. I didn't see any difference recovering the highlights. The DA-10 was a little bit better. Yeah. It showed the contrast a little bit better, but not too much. The shadows, however, when I recovered those shadows on the DA-10's picture, they looked so much better, on the Mark much III, finer there noise. Was no detail. Yeah, and you just completely the Nikon, lost. There was so much more detail. Portraits, who, okay. who did you think was? Also, the Nikon. Why? Because, um, what, this, the Mark III got like 60% of the pictures in focus. Oh, yeah, for the sports. Yeah. Well, we, I was we just were... moving during portraits. You're right, yeah, for, for tracking action. That was the problem with the D800, was it just didn't focus as well as the 5D Mark III. I wanted this to have like 
89% or 86%? Or yeah, so even at the full frame, lower frame rate, we still got like <coughs> 4.3 pictures per second sharp, whereas that gave us 3.7. Uh, substantial difference. I would have been thrilled with the D810 if it had just kept up with the Mark III, but it solidly beat it. Yeah. Uh, and we can crank up the frames per second if we don't mind cropping the frame down a little bit, which you do for sports and wildlife. Um, for portraits in the studio and out, uh, I, I didn't notice a big difference. They, they seemed fine. They handled fine. Um, yeah. You missed the rating button on the 5D Mark III. Oh, I right. did too. I missed that because especially when I'm taking portraits in the studio, you can have so <coughs> many just slightly different pictures and it's nice to just hit that rating button and know that that one's your favorite. Yeah, then when you pull it into Lightroom, you already see your five-star pictures in there. That's something I use all the time for all my types of photography, yeah. but especially in the studio. And I just, I wish I had that. There's no convenient way to do that. You also, um, one other thing that I didn't like about the Nikon was that you couldn't do in-camera HDR using your raw file. I had to change it into a different file. Yeah, that's too bad. We often will set the 5D Mark III to do HDR. Really, we just want bracketing because we'll we'll actually do the HDR processing yeah. later, but it'll process it in camera and show us what it will look like, and it gives us a it gives good you a preview. Pretty good idea, yeah. I will say, though, we'll have to rely on HDR less because this camera has so much more dynamic range. Like, we we used HDR to make up for the lack of dynamic range here. Yeah. So we could do a lot of that with just one exposure. Okay, I I'd also say, though, that if someone has the Mark III and they're not pro, then yeah. I, I don't think it's worth switching over. I think... If you're putting pictures on Facebook, if you're sharing pictures electronically, it probably won't make much of a difference. Oh, you know what was amazing, though, with the Nikon for portraits, was it had the face detection. You're right, and the then metering. And it then auto, it auto-exposed your picture to properly expose the person instead of the background. Yes, yeah. when you're using the viewfinder, not just the live view. Right, right. Um, but you could use the viewfinder, and the, the pictures were just better exposed. Yeah, that, that, that's that blew brilliant. Me away. Yeah. That was brilliant, yeah. Because with the Canon, you're, sure, you can dial in exposure compensation, but you forget, especially during a wedding, that's yeah. when it comes up. You're responding to action, you're shooting events. Uh, you don't have time to think about this. You don't have time to look at the back of your camera and make adjustments. The Nikon got it better. So I had a couple of questions from Twitter. Uh, people, um, Prime Photography asked me about the volume of the shutters, and that's a good question, especially if you're shooting weddings or you're shooting in a oh, church yeah. a lot. Uh, so if you want, we'll just take some pictures here and then uh, in post we can measure it from my mic and see how loud they are. So here's continuous high. Okay. Cool. That was a cool experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Jed Helm says, we're wondering about how the D810 looks at ISO 12800, uh, and we'll provide you sample pictures that we took just out and about so you can examine the noise. Uh, all around was better than the Mark III, though. Yeah. One thing I didn't get a chance to try, I don't know if you did, was video. How do they compare? Yeah, I, I did quite a bit of video with it, and it's actually really similar to the, the 5D Mark III. It does 60 frames a second, so mm -hmm. I guess it's, it's better. But as far as how it handles, it, it seemed basically identical. I'll say it has uh, zebras on it, which highlight overexposed parts of the picture. Yeah. You can get that with Magic Lantern on the Mark III, but it's better that it's built in. Um, but at the same time, we've kind of moved on to Panasonic GH4s now. Yeah, and 4K. to use this for video felt painful for me because the GH4s are so much better. The articulating screen is fantastic. The electronic viewfinder to be able to record and hold it up to your eye. Mm -hmm is wonderful and the GH4 just with 4K it just has unbeatable video quality. The only benefit this has is it's full frame and you get access to all the Nikon lenses oh, yeah. uh, without needing an adapter or, or losing any of that depth of field. This one has an on-camera flash. Do you care about that? No. I don't care either. I, I never, that offends I've me. never missed it on the Mark III so who cares. Yeah. Anything else? I think that wraps it up. If you have any questions for us, just add a comment. We're still, uh, we're going to be comparing it to the D610, so it's not too late to uh, get your questions in, uh, and we will address it in a future video. Also, don't forget to check out our books and DVDs. Check them out. Great prices. And again, that's the more important thing, is learn your photographic techniques. That'll make a bigger difference in any gear. That's true. Thanks so much. Don't forget to share this video. Help us out. Click like and subscribe to see more free videos.